Back in 2019, the U.S. Navy asked Congress for $139 billion to update its fleet of nuclear-powered submarines. Unlike conventional submarines, which need to surface frequently, nuclear submarines can cruise below the sea at high speeds for decades without ever needing to refuel. Defense planners expect that the new submarines will run on one fueling for the entirety of deployment, up to a half century. The advantages of nuclear submarines over their conventional cousins raise a question about another component of the military arsenal. Why don't airplanes run on nuclear power? Well, it turns out America's greatest rival post the Second World War, the Soviet Union allegedly developed a nuclear power jet. This jet was quite advanced and had completed various tests, and although it later turned out to be a hoax, we wonder if the U.S. ever pursued building a nuclear-powered airplane. Sit back and watch as we take a look at the history behind fitting airlines with nuclear reactors. The U.S. has been researching building nuclear-powered airplanes long before the commencement of the Cold War. In the 1940s, the U.S. military had developed several different engine designs, but it was thought as an unnecessary investment over petrochemical engines at the time. But when the U.S. learned the Soviet Union were building their own nuclear-powered aircraft engine, the Americans were invested in building its first-ever nuclear plane, the X-6 Crusader. To begin, the United States would need a prototype. The U.S. would build a nuclear reactor inside of a damaged by a tornado Convair B-36 and call it the NB-36. This is what it would be like. The original crew and avionics cabin was replaced by a massive lead and rubber-lined 11-ton crew section for a pilot, co-pilot, flight engineer and two nuclear engineers. Even the small windows were lined with 30 centimeters or 12 inches of lead glass. The aircraft was also fitted with a 1 megawatt air-cooled reactor at a weight of 16,000 kilograms. It was kept in the middle bomb bay for easy access and loading and unloading so that radioactive sources could be kept safely underground beneath test flights. This design was only created to test the radioactive shielding for the crew. The nuclear reactor was not connected to any of the propulsion systems of the plane. The plan was to develop a production model of this bomber, something similar to the B-60 but nuclear-powered, dubbed the Convair X-6 Crusader. This would allow the U.S. Air Force to field an aircraft that didn't need to land, could be constantly flying with nuclear weapons on board as a deterrent to the Soviets, much like a role that is filled by submarines today, but they got only as far as building the hangar for the aircraft, and the project was even cancelled before they could build the 4,600-meter-long runway which was needed for such a heavy aircraft. The nuclear-powered B-36 prototype plane would go on to record 215 hours of flights, with 89 having the nuclear reactor switched on. It was testing the shielding for the cockpit, finding it adequate for protection for the flight crew, but it never used the nuclear reactor to power the engines. The project was then scrapped after a billion dollars investment, but the USA would use its research as a canvas and roadmap to develop several new bomber designs from Boeing, Northrop, Lockheed, Convair, and many more. It was called the WS-125, and it was an American super long-range strategic bomber used during the Cold War with a nuclear-powered engine, and it was scheduled to be the designation DB-72. Our first concept actually begins with Northrop, who envisioned a special version of the flying wing concept. It showed the vast wing area of the flying wing with turboprops that would be given over to nuclear reactors and shielding with four separate reactors for each turbine. There were also several other follow-up designs including some sci-fi looking asymmetrical wing designs which would have made very cool looking bomber aircraft. Northrop also came up with another design for a nuclear plane. It had a hub at the front that had the ability to be detached when it was at an airport to be replaced with other ammunition or more nuclear fuel with the cockpit in a separate plane attached on the tail and the rear of the aircraft that could escape if there were any issues in flight. Perhaps even the whole construct could have been used as a nuclear weapon if needed. Other contenders included Pratt & Whitney with Lockheed in a competitive engine airframe development to address the requirement. This design was a radical departure from the other aircraft and had supersonic in mind. Other designs from the time include one from Der Hoverland, which was a supersonic bomber that could fly at Mach 2.5 using nuclear power. Unfortunately, these concepts, just like the X-6, would end up being scrapped, but interestingly, the engineers did manage to get two General Electric J87 turbofan engines to be powered successfully by two nuclear reactors. 
This confirms the technology was there, leading some of the other branches and civil markets to consider putting nuclear reactors in their own aircraft. The U.S. Navy was also interested in a nuclear bomber aircraft and thought that its Martin 331 would be a good candidate for nuclear engine conversion. It would be used for deep sea patrols, especially since its range was pretty much infinity and allowed the U.S. Navy to truly project its force. It would also have its own boats to serve as its reactor at sea. Speaking of seaplanes, there was also a design from Curtis Wright with Convair to build an atomic seaplane with retractable skis. There was also a plan to take the XC-99 and turn it into a nuclear aircraft. It would mean that the six engines would now be redundant and be replaced by only two nuclear-powered engines. This would have obviously been a radical improvement on the design, but we know the XC-99 was never picked up, so its nuclear power derivative never happened. Also, an honorable mention goes to the B-52 test nuclear version that had a nuclear reactor connected to the side of the plane like a parasitic engine. While the U.S. were doing their research on nuclear planes, the Soviets didn't sit idle. They made some progress themselves with a physical creation attaching a nuclear reactor to a Tupolev-95, but it never flew on its own nuclear power, only testing the radiation shielding for the cockpit. Soviet engineers had some plans once this worked, allowing to build something called the Tu-119 and then eventually the Tu-135, but the experimental project was cancelled. Had these prototype nuclear-powered conversions worked, the Soviets would have moved on to building specific planes that were designed from the start to be nuclear-powered. The first of these was the M60 that would do away with those flaws of the M50 that had happened decades earlier, such as not being nuclear-powered. This was a Soviet seaplane bomber that was something else. There was also the M30 that had a delta wing design and there was proposed to be a nuclear-powered Tu-115, but all these projects both from USA and Russia ended up coming to a halt. But why did none of these concepts ever see the light of day? Well, for the military, the primary use case of a nuclear engine was in a bomber aircraft to allow it to fly constantly and not be discoverable as part of a nuclear deterrence fleet. But by the mid-1960s, nuclear submarines had started to fill that role. They had several advantages and could launch missiles, reaching deeper into inland water and beating the technology of planes. Because no large aircraft were being built with nuclear engines, the technology had little access to be transferred to the civil markets. Plus, we can't ignore all the inherent risks with nuclear engines. Back then, airlines were reluctant to use the technology in their own fleets. You can imagine if a plane had a leak in the reactor, it would end up contaminating the entire plane. This would pose a huge risk to the crew and cargo. We will likely never see commercial planes running on nuclear reactors, maybe fighter aircraft, but that too seems unlikely at the moment. Well, that's all for this video. Hope you enjoyed watching this one. Thanks for watching.